फ्रेंड्स द वे आई सी इट देर आर ओनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल इन दिस वर्ल्ड कैटेगरी नंबर वन दोज हु मेक लाइफ हैपन एंड टू हु लेट लाइफ हैपन टू देम इन टूडेज वीडियो वे गोन टू विजिट बोथ दीज कैटेगरीज ऑफ पीपल एंड आई विल लेट यू डिसाइड विच कैटेगरी यू बिलोंग टू Hello everyone I am CSK your personal coach and you are watching me on my channel CSK speaks Now allow me to take you into my life Today I am going to share with you that part of my life which not many people know This was the year 1999 and I was appearing for my grade 12 or the intermediate examinations and long story short i failed i failed in my plus 2 exams and when i failed all hell broke loose you can imagine a boy who is raised in a middle class family where education is the only investment only expense and only hope for the family and could not make it i failed and with that went out of the window the hopes the aspirations and the dreams of my parents that one year was living hell but i'm not going to take you there but i'm going to tell you what exactly i went through and how my life turned around i'm not saying that i'm the only one to fail there were many people who failed along with me that particular year and ever since then there are many students who are failing in their examinations and losing maybe 3 months 6 months or a year depending on how the education system has evolved ever since but as i said in the beginning every time you encounter a particular situation in your life you give rise to two kinds of people in your own way one who make life happen and two who let life happened to them when i failed i was in the category number 2 i let life happen to me i started blaming everyone i started taking blame on myself i started hating and try to react people or to people in an adverse manner never used to behave well always used to get angry always used to avoid people and i hated to be among people because it was kind of a shameful thing because i felt as a guilt that people are around me only to make fun of me to blame me and to pinpoint at me and tell me that i am not good enough so i let life happen to me till one day when i came across this particular story from my grandmother my grandmother narrated this to me in kannada but later i realized that this is a story from bible this is a story which has been said in many places in many folk tales whether it is china europe in england or even in bangalore in india so the story goes something like this and i want you to travel with me as i narrate to you that story so this story was of two young boys these two boys lived in a secluded place they belong to a tribe and they were happy with that particular set of 50 families now when they were living there these two boys one day decided to steal two sheep and when they stole those two sheep they wanted to go far into the city or the town and sell those two sheep make some quick money and then have fun with that money so without thinking much they went about stealing those two sheep but unfortunately they were caught they could not fulfill all those aspirations from stealing those two sheep and selling them and making money but they were caught and now they had to face the elders and the members of the tribe so they were caught 
brought to the city square or the village square and there the elders were seated and passed the judgment that these two boys have committed a glorious sin. This was not accepted as part of their tribe because that tribe was known for love, affection, compassion, truth and there was no space or place for anyone with this kind of attitude and stealing was one simple condition for them to be outcasted. So what they did was they said these two boys effective immediately will be outcasted. They don't belong to the tribe anymore and not just that they were made to get two tattoos permanently on their forehead just to shame them publicly and the tattoos were initials for S and T which is sheep thieves. So they had S and T written on their forehead boldly. So in front of that 50 families, in front of everyone in broad daylight, the tattoo maker made S T on their foreheads and pushed them out of the village, pushed them out of their tribe and outcasted them. They were left to die, to fend for themselves. No kindness, no mercy to anyone. Now, when these two boys were left out, they did not know what to do. They were in profuse pain because they were having their foreheads bleeding, the feeling of being outcasted, never again to meet their parents, their family members and to enjoy the safety and comfort of their tribe. And they didn't know what to do. They were basically clueless and directionless. Both of them wept it away. They started sitting under the tree and cry and cry, cry till they felt tired and asleep. After a couple of days, when they woke up to reality, their minds were clear. One of them was so angry. He wanted to teach the entire tribe, the 50 of them, a lesson, a lesson of their lifetime. In fact, he went on to say to the other boy as to, you know, he's going to grow up. He's going to create an army who's going to take down the entire tribe because he wanted to teach everyone a lesson. He said, they did this to me and I am going to give it back ten folds more than what they have done to me. And with that, he went about creating plans to build an army to bring down the entire tribe. When listening to all this, the other boy who was also going through similar emotion started to ask one question. What good would that do if this boy will go on to bring down the whole tribe? Because that means the very tribe, the very identity to which he belongs and he is crying now because he is outcasted will now cease to exist once this boy grows up and finishes it off. So he said, no, that is not the direction I want to go. That is not something which I am really, really interested in. If I am interested in, I am only interested in one thing. And that is to reclaim, to regain my space and place in that tribe. Because I cannot hate my tribe. I cannot hate my clan. So there were two people thinking diagonally opposite thanks to the same situation which they were finding themselves in. So that made them to disagree and then walk two different paths. The first boy who was angry, who wanted to take revenge, went on and tried many things. But eventually he failed. And even before he raised an army, he grew up. That frustration, that desperation, that anger got the better side of him and he committed suicide because he didn't know what to do and he lost the plot before even it began. While the other boy, he had a difficult journey ahead of him. It was not easy for him, but he chose to make the decision of a difficult choice. That is to return back to that particular tribe. He came back. When he came back, people pushed him away. Still, he waited, he came back, he persevered and he entered. At first, he began to do meager jobs which was lying for nobody to do. 
He started doing it and everyone were taunting him, were calling him the sheep thief, the sheep thief as it was inscribed on his forehead. Everyone distrusted him, disrespected him. But he swallowed it all and he continued to do best. In fact, he volunteered in the village to do every other kind of work without taking a single rupee. Whatever came his way, some food, some leftover, he just settled for it and then he stayed there. It took him two and a half years for him to go on to make a real mark where some people requested him to join them on the field work. Now that was a first breakthrough. After that, he went on to assist everyone for the next three to four years with some work, but he still continued not to take any money from them or expect anything in return because for him, he wanted to get his place back inside the tribe. And then he goes on. He goes on so much so that one day after seven long years, a farmer trusts him to take care of his cattle. Now that was a great breakthrough because the sheep thief was suddenly the trustee of the cattle and livestock. With that breakthrough, many people in the village started trusting him or at least trying to trust him with meager little things. He goes on, now several decades later, 10 to 20 years later, this man has become one of the most sought after person of that particular tribe. Because as you know, after 25, 30 long years, those seniors and the villagers have passed away and it has given birth to the next generation and the next generation have only seen him to be a caring and affectionate and a very very important person of the community so everybody starts liking him everybody starts loving his company now till then even after three decades this boy who grew up to become a man now continues to do free service, volunteer to work and help people in his tribe because his single-minded mission was to serve the tribe to which he belonged and the tribe to which he did something wrong, maybe because of youthful exuberance and today he wants to regain and get back his rightful position. After 30-35 years, now Everybody in the tribe, the tribe has also grown from 50 families to now maybe 200, 300 families and everybody believes in him, everybody trusts him, everybody respects him and now he's suddenly back in the whole tribe. Several years later, he has grown old, now he's all having a wrinkled face but those two letters S and T are still there on his forehead but now it hardly matters to anyone. For because many of the younger generations do not even know what those two letters ST mean and there's nobody to give an answer and even if there are a few people alive, they don't really want to tell the story behind S and T because this man over 30-40 years has proved to be an asset, to be somebody beyond what that simple small little story could define him. He has become a verb, a verb for service. He has become a verb for truthfulness. He has become a verb for being a part of the community and protecting the community. And that's why people started thinking that those two letters mean nothing more than saint, a short form for saint, S and T. Now life for him has come a full circle because that very tribe who named him the sheep thief is now accepting him as a saint. But it took him 35-40 long years. So friends, when I heard this story by my grandmother, I got a renewed inspiration, a motivation to relive or kind of recreate my life. Because there I found myself blaming people till I heard the story. But once I heard the story, I understood that there are two categories of people like you saw in the story. One who actually says, let life happen to me and I'm going to flow. And two will say that, no, I'm going to make life happen. Like this particular man who goes on to become a saint in the very tribe 
who outcasted him. That's when I said, I'm going to take life into my hands. I'm going to do whatever best I can to make myself proud, my family proud. And all those people who I felt I have let them down, I want to make them proud. Now, I don't know whether I have succeeded fully because it still may need more time like that man's story of 30, 40 years. But at least 20 years down the line, halfway mark, I feel that I am headed in the right direction. Now, why am I sharing this particular story with you is for one reason. Today, I keep hearing a lot of stories. I keep reading about it in the newspapers and also from WhatsApp exchanges from friends and families and my parents who believe in our schools and admit their students that children are trying to get into the blame game. Children are trying to say that this is not what they want and now they are not ready to accept whatever they get. I would like to tell through this particular video that every single time you encounter such a situation, you have two choices. One, to let life happen or two, to make life happen. Now, yes, the second choice is a little difficult one. The second choice is a little longer one. The second choice will take you through ups and downs. But the second choice will take you to your desired destination. And when you turn back from there, you will only be proud of yourself. But the first choice may give you instant gratification, may give you something to work with immediately, but it may not take you to the destination. So use this particular story, use me as an example if you wish, to tell people that life def definitely has its own way of unraveling, unveiling itself, provided you want to make it happen. Thank you so much for joining me and may you become the verb, the verb so that S and T, which stood for sheep thief, became saint in this particular context. May you become the verb in everything what you do and then let there be success coming your way.